Hey guys, I want to announce we are doing a pre-Arnold Classic sale. So all you have to do is use the code ARNOLD19 to save 19% off of your order so we can get all of it out before the Arnold Classic. If we see you at the Arnold Classic wearing your Shaw Strength shirt, we're going to do our absolute best to get you into the vlog. So looking forward to seeing you all there and thank you for the support. This question's for you. Do you wear a mouthpiece during sex? <laughs> a mouthpiece during sex? Yep. Uh, I would say that I don't need a performance increase. Agreed. Or to bang out extra reps. <laughs> so no, I don't no need No mouthpiece yep. during sex. <laughs> <laughs> this question is for you, and I think it's a good question. Okay. How does it feel living with a guy being famous for being the strongest and awesomest man alive? <laughs> did you write that question? I did not, but I did find it. He's your uh, new favorite fan. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest with you guys, Brian is just dad and husband and equals in our house. Yeah. So while we're very proud of him for being strong and the most awesomest, <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're just a normal family here at home doing our best every day, yeah. so. Definitely. What's the worst food you ever ate? I guess I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, two years ago, right after Braxton was born, we planned a family vacation to Cancun, and I had been really watching what I ate leading up to it. You know, moms lose the baby weight and stuff and I've been eating a ton of snap peas. So we're at this Mexican restaurant on vacation and I'm thinking, yes, they have snap peas here. But when I take a big giant bite of it, it was not a snap pea, some ridiculously hot, spicy pepper. I don't even know exactly what it was, but it's the worst thing I've ever eaten. I will never do that again. Coming from the person that thinks yellow mustard is spicy. Yeah, that, that, was, that was pretty funny. Your I eye, cried. Her eyes were watering and her reaction was really funny. I mean, obviously not fun for you, but fun for me. Yeah. yeah. One of those things, if you were there and I just started. Crying. Yeah, I didn't understand what was happening. I thought that something had upset her and obviously the pepper had upset her. I was upset. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite food you've ever eaten? The worst food I've ever ate. Um, I have obviously been in a lot of different places in the world. And I have eaten some terrible things. Uh, probably the worst thing for me, I would say, was in Ukraine. I don't know what it was exactly, but I got so <laughs> sick. You don't even know what it was. No, it was just a combination of everything yeah. that I ate there. And I got so sick. Uh, I mean, it was literally to the point that we were calling the hotel for more toilet paper. And <laughs> I came home, I, it was literally like 25 pounds lighter. And I had to go to the hospital. So I'm going to go pretty with bad. that. Yeah. That sounds bad. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was not pretty bad. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. What is the funniest thing that's happened in public that came up because of Brian's size and strength? Gosh, there is, there's funny things that happen all the time. It's almost normal for funny things to happen. I would say probably the most recent was us on vacation and the place that we went to vacation the chairs had arms on them in the breakfast area. You remember this? Yes, yeah. And it was literally every single day I had to ask for a new chair and then stand there like an idiot waiting for the chair while everybody was getting their food. And it, I don't know why they didn't just leave a chair in there because they knew I was going to be there every day. But that was pretty funny because I feel you like... You know what I think was funnier? What? When you broke the tanning bed. Yeah. <laughs> I was going tanning to try to get ready for vacation. For the vacation. So I didn't burn. And um, apparently tanning beds are not made for men that are 450 pounds. And I laid, The lay down ones, not yeah, the stand up ones. Lay down. And they assured me it was okay. But I sat down and then laid down and heard a big pop. And it was like I was on a... The best way to say it was like I was on a lake that was ice. And I can imagine if you hear a pop, it's a really bad thing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to 
try to move really quickly to get out of the tanning bed, but it shattered, it cut my leg. It was awful. And, and I had to walk out. The, the best part of it was I had to walk out and tell them <laughs> that the tanning bed was now lo no longer going to work because it was shattered. So that From was... From laying on it. Yeah. It's another thing. Breaking chairs, tanning beds. It's all in a day's work for me, you know? <laughs> Has Brian ever farted so much you had to make him sleep on the couch? <laughs> I feel like I haven't. If Brian <laughs> could fit on the couch to sleep, yes. But... You think so? I mean, sometimes you're kind of stinky. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you're saying that in the nicest way. Okay, fair enough. But so you've wanted to kick me out on yes, the couch. Okay. But he doesn't fit on the couch. So yeah. I have thought about sleeping on the couch. Or I just he doesn't <laughs> typically sleep under the cover, so I'll hide under the covers and just face and everything. So I don't have to smell him. I, I really didn't know this. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, this question, what is the most important life lesson you want to teach your kids? Wow. That's a good question. That is, that's a really good question. I would say for me, if I were to answer that, I've used the term be great uh, through my whole career competing. It's something I've had on the wall in my gym. And to me, um, you know, the term be great is just chasing greatness in everything that I do, trying to be the best, trying to put, push myself. Obviously, I have that saying on t-shirts, which are now on sale uh, at shawstrength.com, just to plug that a little bit. Um, but that's, that's the lesson that I would wanna teach our kids, yeah. is just to push themselves to be great in whatever they choose to do. I mean, honestly, I feel that my answer's very similar. And for me, it would be that they live their life with passion. Whatever they choose to do, it makes me sad <laughs> thinking about it. Not sad, yeah. but like, I just want them to find what they're passionate about. And I don't care if it's playing the piano or sure. being strong or being a really good chef, whatever it is, just find something they love and just drives them, yeah. drives them to be great every yeah. day. You know, just keep pushing because they love what they're doing. Yeah. We'll encourage them with whatever they do. I think we, you know, to add on to that, we obviously always get asked about, you know, whether we want them right, to be strong sure. men or to be strong or whatever. And, you know, of course, you know, selfishly, I would love for them to lift weights and to work out. Now, does that mean that I want them to compete in strong men? Only if they choose to do so. And like Carrie said, it's whatever they want to do, as long as they're passionate about it and they um, push themselves to be the best that yeah. they possibly can be. I think as parents, that's all we could ever ask yeah, for. For sure. Have you ever seen Shaw get angry? If so, is it scary? To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen you fully angry. And yes, I do believe it would be <laughs> extremely <laughs> scary yeah. if that happened. The only time I ever feel that I've even close seen that is at competitions where you feel maybe something's going the wrong way or something along those lines, but it's not even an anger at anyone else. It's just you and frustration. Yeah. But a real anger, I don't believe I've ever seen that. And I am very sorry for the person that uh, may ever be at the other end of that yeah. because I can imagine, and it would not be good. <laughs> Best advice for a new parent, top three of each of you. So what would you say, and then I'll answer. Oh, top three new parent. Gosh, where do we go with that? Um, I would say you're not going to be perfect. Yes. That is probably a big one. I think both of us going into that felt, I at least felt like, oh, I'm going to be super dad and I'm going to do everything perfect. And we like perfection. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had to you're accept. You're not going to be a perfect yeah, parent. That, that would be a big one. Um, I would say for a new parent, get ready to not sleep or to have your sleeping interrupted frequently. So sleep before the baby comes? Yeah, as much as you yes. can. And then try to forget what sleeping is like because it's pretty hard. Yeah. Gosh, another one I would say, um, learn patience. I, I feel like I'm 
probably more patient than you. Definitely more yeah. patient than I am. Um, and there's a lot of times now our uh, two and a half year old is getting into the, I want to do everything by myself. And if you try to help me, I'm going to get frustrated and, and uh, throw a little temper tantrum. And so it's, it's trying to remain calm uh, with him. Yes. It's probably sure. off the top of my head. I mean, there's so many things that you don't know going into uh, parenthood. Yeah. And I think that I learn something new almost every single day. But what do you think? What would you add to that? I think I learn something new every minute. Yeah. <laughs> they teach us. Um, I think first thing I would probably say is just kind of trust your instinct. Um, you got to where you are. Your parents taught you whatever. Just go with your instinct and you're going to get a million and one suggestions, recommendations, people telling you what to do. Just trust yourself. Um, number two, I think this is important. I feel pretty passionate about this, is your kids are only going to know what you teach them. Your yeah, one year old, your two year old, um, is just some hard, cold truth. Your kid doesn't come out loving macaroni and cheese. So if you want your kid to eat healthy, you teach them to eat healthy. We get asked all the time, why do your kids eat so healthy? Because they don't know. They any only yeah. know what we taught them. Um, I'm going to repeat patience. Oh my yeah. gosh. Patience, patience. And Brian's way better at this than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, but I'm, <laughs> I'm better on lack of sleep. Yes, I get see, less sleep. So. I, you, you kill me on that. <laughs> if I, if I don't get sleep, I'm, I'm wrecked, completely but wrecked. Patience but yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, just trust yourself. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Be as patient as possible. Yeah. Top tips for people who want to compete at the highest level, but don't want to lose their wife by putting in the time it takes to compete at that level. How do you balance that? Is that for you or for yeah, me? Yeah, I, th I think I can probably take, I mean, this is, this is uh, something that's come up for me before where there seems to be this kind of disconnect uh, due to the fact that most people think that I have to sacrifice so much and I have to give up all my family time and all my personal time and everything to compete at the top level like I do. And that's just simply not true. I just prioritize my time. That's it's as simple as that. So when it's time to train, I flip that switch and I go into training mode. And when I need to eat, I make sure I'm regimented with my eating, but during the day I have time for my family and I have time for my wife. And, um, you know, it's, it's just prioritizing that, you know, and, and um, certainly I train at night. So for us, we have date nights that are planned. We try to make those type of plans together uh, so that we're on the same page uh, with everything. But on the flip side of that coin, that was a big thing with Carrie uh, when we were first dating she knew how important this was to me and that uh it was my responsibility my job and and um a priority to me to be able to train and be strong and so she supported that and i think that the big disconnect is is if you have a girlfriend or wife that is not supportive of you and doesn't want you to compete that's where the disconnect is i think that's where you're going to really have a problem so um i would say that what you need to try to do your best, uh, if this is a priority, is to p pick a woman that's supportive of, of your goals and what you're trying to accomplish. And hopefully she has some goals of her own and therefore she will understand better because Carrie's obviously into working out. She knows what it takes, um, has competed herself before and all those are great qualities. So hopefully that answers your question, but um, would you add anything to that? I think just in general, both of us, and especially you, we're very intentional about the choices we make. And it comes anything from sleeping to eating to, like you said, prioritizing time. We're very intentional. Yeah. Is this gonna make me better? Is this gonna make me worse? Is this gonna make my family better or better off in the future? Or is this gonna pull us back or yeah. make things worse? So you make it sound very easy. I wouldn't say it's necessarily easily easy, excuse me, but we're very intentional about our decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, to prioritize things. Yeah, definitely.